our competitor bring, carry out a very good product. Uh, you can print a multicolor, print at very fast speed and with uh, very consistent uh, output. Yeah, but uh, at that time we got our prototype and we are very happy. Ah, it's prototype working well. It's working, working, going cool. And then when we see our competitor's product, I say, wow, they changed the standard of the industry. I'm joined today by the CEO of Frozen, Ray Wu, and we are going to be talking about Arco and Frozen and everything to do with the launch of this new printer and the Kickstarter. How are you doing today, Ray? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. I'm super excited to be here in Taiwan and to mm. talk to you about this printer and your company. But before yeah. we do that, I just want to give you the opportunity to introduce yourself to yeah our audience and the world for anyone who may not be familiar with you and yeah. Frozen. Okay. Actually, Frozen, a startup company founded in 2016. It is founded by me. I'm Ray Wu and I'm my partner, Alex Lee. And uh, we are we are both our engineers. And back 10 years ago, there's a big hype for 3D printing industry, right? So at that time, we're talking with our, my partner say, hey, can we do something about 3D printers? And then maybe we, after a short survey, we think, well, maybe we can start to do some engineering stuff on the 3D printers. My colleague there is a mechanical engineer, and for me, I'm a material science engineer. So we try to find a technology to dive into it. Frozen itself is a word we created by me and my partner. We, it's a combination word of photon and frozen. It is kind of the, from the mechanism from the racing 3D printer. We use photon to cure the racing. We pick these two words and make it frozen. So why we choose frozen? Because at that time, 10 years ago, when we just do the 3D printing, there is an animation very popular in the United States, in Disney, called Frozen. Mm -hmm. So we think that, that could be a good idea if we put a name called Frozen. And everyone is know, already know these words and they know it. We are doing the racing 3D printers. So that's where Frozen has come from. And most people know us that, oh, it is a company doing an LCD 3D printer. But to be more specific, we are the first one to do the mono LCD 3D printer. LCD 3D printer used to print very slow, but we are the first one to make it print three times faster by developing the mono LCD. We spend a lot of time and money and investment working with the LCD manufacturers, trying to define the LCD that is suitable for 3D printing, not only for display, for 3D printing itself. Frozen actually is an engineering oriented company focusing on high quality racing 3D printer using mono LCD technology. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously we are from an FDM background. Yeah. We don't deal with resin 3D printing. Yes. And so a lot of our audience as well, they may not be familiar with all the different kinds of resin 3D printers or 3D printing technologies. Yeah. Um, could you just really briefly explain when you're talking about LCD resin 3D printing and 3D printing yeah. technology, what does what does that mean and what does that entail? For resin 3D printer, it's, a, it's like a, you're using a resin as a raw materials. And this resin, when you expose to the light, you will cure into the solid parts. And why we call it LCD 3D printer? DLP 3D printer or SLA is because of the difference of the light source. Mm -hmm. And we are using an LCD as a light source. LCD itself will project the patented light. Um, yeah, and it will cure the resin in the press pattern you want. By curing the pattern layer by layer, you can accumulate a 3D object uh, very, uh, very quickly. So for resin 3D printer itself, it, since it is using light to cure the resin, so it can have very high accuracy. And you can print a, print a very high details, but the limitation is it, you can print only small objects. So you have all this experience, the, these yeah. years of experience in resin and your LCD yeah. 3D printing. What inspired your move to go into FDM? They are both additive manufacturing and 3D printing, but they're very different spaces. So um, what inspired this um, expansion into oh. FDM? Okay, actually... It's, it's from a feedback from our customers. Uh, as you may know, LCD 3D printer, uh, or, or we can say racing 3D printer, it can only print, it can print high detail parts, but it can only print a small part. And our users always say, hey, Ray, I need a larger print, high details. You can choose different material. For example, I want a PCABS, nylon, something like that. Can you make, it, make this? 
I say, uh, for raisins, it's uh, totally different. But uh, but for and for the larger print, uh, since we are using the LCD, there are some mechanical problems. So you cannot print. You cannot always print large print. In racing, for large print, it's only about 20, 20 centimeters. Uh, it's large, but it apparently it's not large enough. So when when we are trying to solve this uh, users' problems, and we think about FDN, when people talking about raising an FDN printer. They always say, ah, oh, it's uh, in competition, something like that. But in, during our conversation with our users, we think it's a kind of, uh, how to say, a technology that it can be combined, it can be integrated and fulfill the customer's real need for the production or prototyping. So at that time, we think about FDM. Maybe we can give it a try. We want to join the FDM market start from 2020, maybe. We start very early. Yeah, we want to do a FDM, but uh, at that time, we don't have... Uh, we don't have, it's just an idea. And yeah. uh, why we're really trying to dive into this market development is it, uh, back in 2022 because too many people want uh, large printers. Yeah. yeah. That's something we're very familiar with at Slice is people want bigger printers. They want yeah. huge printers. We work with, you know, some companies. We have some customers that have printers the size of whole rooms. Yeah. And they're huge and they're making chairs and furniture. Yeah. In insanely large things. I'm very amazed when I go to Formlex in Germany, right? Yeah. Yeah, I see lots of pre- people are printing. In, uh, I think in Europe and United States, they are printing large stuff. But in Taiwan, in, in Taiwan, Asia, we only print small ones. But we, when we go there, we say, oh, large printer is popular, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah people want to print very large things. And yeah. FDM allows you to do that, Yeah, um, which I think is an interesting use case. And yeah. so... It's clear that you're obviously you're listening to customer feedback. Yes, customers want larger things, um, and so that's a reason that Arco was birthed or the idea. What challenges did you face in making this expansion, in developing kind of Arco, making this move from resin to FDM technology? Ah, uh, okay. Actually, uh, when doing the raising 3D printer, we are very familiar with the uh, motor control and uh, some uh, mechanical design. Actually, it's shared technology with the FDM. So basically, when building this printer, we don't really find any difficulties in technology-wise. And uh, we uh, at the beginning, we use a Glimmer-based uh, code to try to make uh, it assistant. And I think we built out a prototype. Just about six months, we got a prototype. And it works pretty well. So I think the challenge is, I don't think it's from the technology. But the problem is the variation of the standard. You know, in the 2022, there, our competitor carry out a very good product. Uh, you can print a multicolor, print at very fast speed and with a very consistent uh, output. Yeah, but uh, at that time, we got our prototype and we are very happy. Ah, it's prototype working well. It's working, working, going cool. And then when we see our competitor's product, I say, wow, they changed the standard of the industry. The standard just raised a lot. They bring, carry out a good products. Because of this product, people expect to see uh, that if, if you're a newcomer to this market, people expect you to perform better, uh, outstanding than this product. So at that time, we decided, okay, we cannot sell our prototype. We need to redesign everything in this part. So even so, we start our FDM project back in 2021, 2020. Uh, we, because of this, uh, the standard change, uh, the people standard change, uh, we tried to, re- we, we actually we redesigned everything and tried to catch up with the new standard. So I think that's the most challenging part for Frozen. I think that shows a real commitment to your customers, though, that you were willing to start over. I think there are a lot of companies that maybe not, maybe wouldn't be willing to do that because it shows that you are willing to say, hey, that's not what people want anymore. Mm-hmm. They clearly responded well to this shift in uh, the market. And so we're going to pivot. We're going to adapt yeah. and we're going to move in this new direction, even if that means we're going to wait, you know, two years, three years until. Yeah. It's time. And that can be hard a lot of times. Yeah. If you have a prototype that's almost ready to go, yeah. a lot of people might just go with it, release it, and then start working on the next one. Yeah. Was that a difficult decision to stop and start over? Uh, actually, it's a difficult decision because we almost finished our bone. 
we are ready to go, ready to do the mass production. But uh, you know, frozen actually, we hope that this brand can uh, we we bring a good printing quality products to our customers. And I hope this brand can continuously bring the good product, outstanding products to our customers. So at the time, if we feel that oh, this product cannot fulfill our customers' need, we will directly post our project and see how we can improve. Actually, we do this many times in our companies before. So Frozen Arco is just one of it. How do you see Arco fitting into your overall product lineup and strategy moving forward? Because you obviously have a large catalog of yeah. resin 3D printers, and now you have your first FDM 3D printer. Yeah. So it's kind of the, uh, the the black sheep, the outcast of the family right now. Yeah. How do you see it fitting into your plans for the future? Yeah, I think we can see we can see from the three, three specification. One is for the printing speed. For racing 3D printer, actually, we focus on fast printing. Mm-hmm. For FDN, we, we call Arco a fast printer, but compared with the racing printer, it's still not as fast as racing printers. So it's a kind of, we want a fast prototyping, it's a, we choose racing. But for Arco, we are focusing on second aspect. It's a print volume, build volume. You can print, uh, Arco is 30 centimeter uh, in square. You can have the 30 centimeter in square printing area. I think this is what we focus. It's a large area printer in our product line. Yeah. And also the third, the third aspect is the, about the materials, uh, variety of the materials. Yeah, for just as I said, uh, the racings, you can only choose uh, accurately, accurate uh, materials and the, the property is just there. But for the FDM, you can choose a lot of uh, materials for, from the PLA, ABS to up high temperature material like nylon or rigid material like uh, uh, carbon fiber field composite materials. So for FDN, actually, we are focusing more on the material variety. For Arco itself, it will be the large printer with multi-materials uh, selections. We can provide different materials to our customers. That's our focus. When we're looking at the market today and all the options that you have with FDM 3D printers specifically, how does Arco differentiate itself? What makes it unique? Okay. So for, for Frozen Arco, actually, it's a large multicolor FDN 3D printer with special print head design and also sturdy gantry. And most importantly, it's fixed core XY. So it make overall, when you separate all these topics, it's simple. It's no difference. But when we combine this topic together, oh, it's a difficult p- task. When a consumer receives the printer for the first time, is there anything that they're going to immediately notice that you're excited for a consumer when they unbox the printer for the first time? I think it's a sturdy mechanical design of the printer. You can see nowadays all the printers are very slender. It's a thin, thin aluminum uh, chases, something like that. But for Arco, everything is strong, sturdy. So you can you can slap on this printer and say, wow, this high quality metal printer. <laughs> yeah. I think that will be the first impression for this printer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've already I've seen it uh, today, and it it is big. It yeah. looks heavy, durable. Yeah, um, it it looks like a piece of machinery that is built to last yeah. for a long time. Yes. Yeah. Um, what are your long term goals and aspirations for Arco? What do you envision for the machine, and how do you think it's going to impact the FDM space, and then? the 3D printing industry as a whole. Yeah. Actually, we start from the, how does a core XY structure? And it is our first step. And for FDN, actually, just as I say, we focus on more selections about the materials. So we will try to build up a sturdy a sturdy printer with the kind of the heating chamber and something like that. In, in the future, we hope we can build a printer that can take different kind of um, engineering plastics. For example, like a Nylon, nylon is the basic basic one. You can got also print a high temperature nylon and the most important maybe subform polysubform material or peak materials. I think I hope in a long way, in the long run, frozen accord series can carry out as many uh, materials as possible and fulfill the customer's need. Yeah, but for children, I will Arco is our first step. We hope yeah. we can work with the community and try to see what else we can do for the short term. But in the long run. Material selection is our first priority. Do you feel any added pressure coming from, you're coming from, you know, the world of resin and you've built a reputation as frozen. You are 
you know, you do resin very well. You've got a reputation yeah. here and now you're coming into FDM with Arco. Yeah. Do you feel pressure to perform uh, in a way that maybe if you were just a new, you know, startup on the scene there and it was your first time ever yeah. having a machine that you, you wouldn't have, like how, how does, how does that play out? Do you, do you feel uh, a, a sense of pressure that you, you have to live up to expectations, even though it's your first time doing FDM? Yeah. Uh, definitely, it's a lot of pressure when we step from racing to FDM. For FDM, it's totally a totally different because since 2008, maybe from the FDM open source community has already uh, showed up in 2008. Yeah, so and so for in FDM market, there are already a lot of experts with using different kind of FDNs and different kind of suppliers, and they are they are all well experienced and they are now they know a lot about the printer itself, maybe some users are better than us. And yeah. also there are already a lot of suppliers They can provide a stable enough, uh, high quality enough products for F FDN. But for Frozen, it's our first FDN printer. They are put a very high expectation on these products and also high standards. So for Frozen, actually we feel very pressured. And anyway, it's just like, uh, you know, just like uh, what we do for to all of our projects. We are not afraid of pressure, but uh, we need time. Another quick question that I had about Arco and something that I think differentiates it from some of the other uh, similar offerings on the market today is yeah. the fact that it uses open source firmware yeah. compared to some that use closed source firmware. Um, what led to that decision? Okay, so for FDM firmware itself, actually there are already some open source uh, code layer like a Clipper. Actually, I think that's important. They already do a very good job on this part. I believe we don't, bo we cannot build a better firmware, yeah. better than Clippers. So we just use the Clipper directly. We don't try to hide anything. Oh, it's our own self-developed uh, firmware, something like that. We don't do that. We just say it's from Clipper. That's from firmware part. But for slicer, actually for multicolor, when you look back on the market, for multicolor 3D printer, there are only one or two selections. Also, some technology is patent protected. So we are trying to avoid the, uh, avoid the violation about a patent and also try to develop a multicolor print head for, for uh, we, we want to build a multicolor printer. So we want to avoid the patent and uh, we need to do some special design. So integrating the slicer in with our uh, hardware movement is pretty important. So at this point, I will say for slicer, it is it is necessary to develop our own slicer so that we can optimize the printer. I am not normally in Taiwan, yeah. so we're here because of a special occasion, um, and we are celebrating our collaboration and upcoming uh, co-branded Gamma Master nozzle um, yeah. for the Kickstarter campaign for Arco. And so as a part of this partnership and collaboration, I just want to know what actually attracted Frozen to Slice Engineering and what, what brought the two companies together and what do we have to look forward to in the future? Okay. So first of all, welcome to Taiwan. I hope you enjoy the trip. Okay. So uh, when we're talking about Slice Engineering, actually, I met your company uh, back in 2023 like in Red Pit City in the United States. At that time, I'm very surprised about when, when I'm visiting your booth. I see lots of people surrounding you on your booth talking about nozzles, hard ends, with, and uh, you explain with a very professional, in a very professional way. You also show your simulation results and detailed technology data. I, I think, oh, uh, it would be cool if we uh, we we can collaborate with you in terms in our FDN. Maybe it can make our printer have a better quality. Uh, we can have a better user experience for our users. Yeah. So we talk with your uh, co colleagues about the, uh, some the collaboration. Your colleague recommend me to use the Gamma Masters nozzles at the at, at the beginning, and we we just tried it. And also, it got a special coating. You know, when doing a pre FDN printing. We are afraid of changing the nozzle. Yeah, so we hope if we can install the nozzle and then we can print continuously without any problems. And I think it's, that's, a, that's a benefit Gum Master can bring us. So that's why I propose to your colleagues uh, to Slice Engineering and say, hey, uh, we are doing the FDN next year. Uh, it's a frozen alcohols project uh, to see can we do some collaboration, especially focus on Gum Master's nozzle. Yeah. 
after all, I hope we we have a professional product, and we and Science Engineer is a professional company. We hope Frozen and Science Engineer we can do some collaboration and bring our users a very nice experience in the FDN 3D printing. Yeah, yeah, we're we're super excited to be able to collaborate with you. I'm thrilled to be here in Taiwan and get to tour the space and see the printers in action. Yeah. Um, and we're excited to integrate Gamma Master onto Arduino. And um, what has been the experience of you and your team with Gamma Master so far on the Arco specifically? How has it? How has its performance been on Arco? Well, it's perfect. Yeah, uh, I will say at the beginning it's hard to it's hard to integrate this to our printer at the very beginning. But uh, soon we re- we solve the problem, and once it uh, installing our printers, actually it's not stop. We print a lot of materials from TPU, from carbon fiber filaments. We print a lot of materials without any problems. I like this product. It's perfect. It's awesome. Yeah. It's great to hear. If you are interested in Arco, we're going to have a link in the description to the Kickstarter where you can back the campaign. If we cross the $1.8 million stretch goal, every backer is going to get a custom co-branded nozzle mm. uh, that is a Gamma Master nozzle for the Arco. Um, so if you're interested, you can get the information there. And um, then we'll also be including links to the Frozen website. And I really appreciate you inviting me to your headquarters, the opportunity that I've had to see your space and interview you. I really appreciate your time. If you have anything else that you want to say before we wrap up here uh, about Arco or Frozen, or Kickstarter, or anything like that, the floor is yours. Actually, Frozen Arco is a long journey for us. And it is finally on Kickstarter campaign it's live now and as of today actually we still got we got a lot of feedbacks from our communities and we are trying to integrate everything on our printers and try to do a demo and try to respond to your questions if you got any thoughts on this printer please share your comments in our community we will try our best to get back to you and this campaign will be ends in april 7th and we are still a, a little step away from the 1.8 million that is our stretch goal target. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to win the frozen Arco with the Gamma Master nozzles, please sponsor us, fake this project, and we will we will send all of this together to you and get you the very good experience in FDN 3D printing. Thank you. We're going to be also including links to all of that in the description below. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about the Frozen Arco, the link to the Kickstarter is going to be in the description, as well as a link to their Facebook group, their website, and all of that um, is going to be available. And if you have uh, any other thoughts about the printer, we're interested to see what you're thinking. And then we have one more video that's going to be coming out after this that I'm really excited about. Thank you so much for your time, and don't forget to stay zesty. Stay zesty.